Whoa, is this thing on? Mic, mic, mic check. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've made one of these videos. I feel like it's been a long time since I've talked to you guys, but I'm still alive. I'm here and I'm back. We're actually, wait, we're going back to the basics. I'm gonna be talking about what I'm gonna be focusing on here on the number one day trading channel from here on out. And gonna share with you guys kind of my plan going forward and how I'm going back to the basics. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, Patrick here. I know it's been a long time. It's been a real long, long time. I've been busy. I've been traveling the world and just searching, soul searching. I've also been making money doing other things than day trading. It hasn't been a bad thing. It's been a good thing. I feel like, you know, I took a step back. I was able to kind of like realize that the journey that I was previously on, you know, where, where I was kind of, where I was heading, uh, just wasn't heading to a place that I wanted to be. And I've really just spent a lot of time thinking uh, about kind of what I want to do with my trading, with my day trading, and how I really just want to focus, you know, on just kind of getting back to the basics, getting back to the point in the beginning where I was just, I loved the YouTube, I loved the making the videos, the live trading, the live streams and all that. You know, I wanna get back to that, but also I wanna share with you guys kind of my journey of going back to the basics, what I'm gonna be focusing on. So first thing that I wanna focus on, and a lot of people have commented about this before, the biggest thing that I, you know, I wrangle with all the time is risk to reward, opportunity, the cost of opportunity. And it doesn't just, it's not only for trading, but obviously, you know, risk to reward, it, you know, we use it for trading. I really, I wanna focus from here on out on really, you know, capitalizing on some of these crazy movers. We've seen stocks recently up 200, 300, 400%. And, you know, just scalping, you know, just taking a little scalp, little scalp, little scalp, just is not enough for me. Maybe personally, you know, I just, I really wanna capitalize on the moves. I've been trading long enough now to realize that scalp trading, although it's very appealing, you know, to be able to jump in, jump out, make money quickly. It's this amazing thing where I can just get boom, boom, boom. I can make money really quick. It's hard to say the least. It's hard emotionally. It's hard uh, just overall statistically. It's hard in general. But really just, you know, understanding how these stocks move, understanding that you should be buying the dip, not buying the top and vice versa. Having these basic ideas of how to enter a trade is going to be a game changer. Because when I first started trading, you know, I've talked about this a lot, a lot of times I end up chasing, I end up chasing and chasing, FOMO, FOMO. And I end up getting in, taking a little bit of profit and be like, wow, you know, I made 10 cents. But that 10 cents, always was overshadowed by the 20, 30 cent loser the right after or the day after. So you would make 10 cents Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you lose 40 cents on Thursday and you'd be back to where you started at on Monday. So from here on out, my big goal or my big plan or you know my focus is really going to be looking for that risk to reward. You know, I wanna be risking $100 for the possible three, four, $500 move. I don't wanna be risking $100 just to make $50. And I've done that in the past. People have commented about it. They said my risk reward is terrible, and I agree. A lot of times my risk reward just was not in place. So that's what I'm getting back to, the basics, getting back to that idea of what I need to be focusing on, and that's risk to reward. Now, the second thing that I really wanna focus on is just overall emotions. Understanding that once I'm in a trade, you know, I've done this before in the past, where I enter the trade, you know, the emotion builds up, I get out quickly. And then I ask myself, you know, why? Why did I get out quickly? The stock is holding trend, the stock is holding support, the stock is doing everything that I wanted it to do, but I ended up getting out quickly for no real reason other than the emotion of being like, oh God, I'm in, I'm in the green, I'm in the green and I wanna get out. So that's gonna be one of my big focuses. I think that comes down to just not trading your P&L. People have talked about that in the past, you know, Am I too focused on my P&L? If I'm up $200, do I quickly take the $200? Or do I look at what's happening with the stock? Is the stock making higher lows? Is the stock 
holding a trend? Is it looking like it wants to go higher before taking profit? I really need to make sure that I'm focusing on what's happening with the chart, what is happening with the stock, not just, oh my God, I'm up $100. So that's gonna be another focus as well. You know, back to the basics, understanding that when I enter the tree, it's not just, okay, I'm in, oh, I'm up 100, I take profit. So that's gonna be stopped. Another thing that I really wanna focus on is just overall you know, accountability, holding myself accountable, not entering trades that aren't good setups, you know, not entering just because I'm like, oh, it's, it's, this is the one, you know, I wanna buy here and, and not really having a plan. So again, it kind of goes back to the, you know, the earlier idea of risk to reward, but overall, I just wanna keep myself accountable because I wanna make sure that I'm not just entering a trade because because you know, for no reason. I really want to make sure that when I'm entering, I have a, a you know a real thesis, a real idea to why I'm entering. And again, that's going back to the basics. Because when you first start learning to trade, you should be kind of learning these things. You know, learning risk reward, learning why you're entering a trade, learning why you're exiting, not just jumping in, jumping out, jumping in, jumping out, jumping in, jumping out, and you know, just doing it for these quick little scalps. So that's going to be really just kind of summing this whole thing up is the big focus for me is making sure that when I enter a trade, I enter at a, you know, a logical area. And then I look to take profit again at a logical area. But I also understand that, okay, the stock is doing everything that I want it to do. Should I take profit? You know, maybe I'll take a half. Another thing that I really want to do as well is scale into trades. And that's something that I've not done well in the past. A lot of times this is what happens. This is, this is a story of my life, right? I will enter a trade, let's say $3. I enter it at $3 and I buy a thousand shares and that's all I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy a thousand shares and I buy a thousand shares, I buy a thousand shares right at $3. And I tell myself, okay, you know, I wanna make 20, uh, 20 cents. I wanna make $200 profit. And then all of a sudden the stock pulls back to 275 and I'm like, huh? You gotta be kidding me, right? You gotta be kidding me, because we broke through the $3 area, it pulls back to 275, and now I'm like, well, do I get out here? You know, do I get out at this point? And maybe I hold it, maybe I hold for that, you know, move back to $3, and then it goes to like 310, I take profit, making $100, and it goes to $4. You, you, see, what, you see the pattern here, but the pattern here is that instead of just trying to hammer that first entry, because it's not that you're always gonna be wrong about buying that $3 break. You know, you might get that move to 340 or whatever, but there's gonna be those days where you're gonna be just a lot better off, you know, looking for uh, the idea of scaling in here. So instead of buying, let's say I wanna buy 1,000 shares, right? If I wanna buy 1,000 shares, the stock is at $3. My goal is obviously, you know, to buy around that $3 area, but then I can see on the chart, you know, the stock's kinda, of, it's a little overextended, Instead of buying a thousand shares right there at three dollars, my plan would be to maybe buy a little bit right there at three dollars, maybe 250 shares. Okay, and then I'm like, I want to buy a thousand in my head. I'm like, that's my goal. I want a thousand shares here, but I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback. Okay, now I'm going to buy that pullback to 275. I'm going to lower my average. Beautiful, right? It pulls back to 275. It goes back to three dollars. Now, instead of selling at three, you know, 305 and taking a small profit, I'm going to add as we break above that resistance for that next push higher. So I'm gonna be adding into that strength and I'm gonna be adding to that dip to that pullback on that overall trend. So instead of just trying to buy, you know, that first, that first break, trying to get that first entry, just boom, I'm right in. I don't wanna just get right in. I wanna make sure that I give myself a little bit of wiggle room because like I said, you're not always gonna be like spot on with your entries. But if you can have a plan, then you can also kind of give yourself more padding. Because if I'm buying a little bit of a pullback, I can buy 275, and now you know my average is 290 or 285, whatever my average is, and then I buy for the push. Again, I'm keeping my average at that same area, which was $3 before, but in the past, I would have held it from three to 275, and then I would have you know, hoped and prayed that it went back to $3, and I would take profit you know, five, 10 cents. But now, I'm kind of, I'm getting a piece of the move, you know, if it does go from three to 350, I still get that move, but at least I give myself some padding. So if it does pull back, I can add into that pullback and then I can add into the push higher for that move higher. Me buying at $3 and buying a thousand shares and it pulling back to 275 and now I'm down $250 or right, now I'm down yeah, 250, right? Yeah, can I do math right? 
15, yeah, 25. Now that it pulls back to 275 and I get out for a $250 loss or I hold it and maybe let's say it goes lower, let's say it goes to 260 and now I'm getting out for a $400 loss. Instead of taking a thousand shares down to six, down to that 40, you know, instead of taking a thousand shares down to that 260 area, I'm only basically holding 250 from three and then 250 from 275. So my average is gonna be less and I'm not gonna have that full size and I'm gonna be able to kind of hold, have a little bit better overall, I think, management in the trades. And I'm also gonna be able to minimize my risk to the downside, but then maximize my risk to the upside as we push higher. So that's gonna be, again, another big focus for me is kind of scaling in and then scaling out. Scaling in, scaling out, scaling in, scaling out. Overall, we're just going back to the basics. And again, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my journey along the way of going back to the basics, refocusing, getting back in the action, and making sure, making sure that I defend, I defend my number one, number one day trading channel in the world. I gotta make sure that I keep that title. We're going, baby, we're going places, me and you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's go.